Cesium-137 is a radioactive tracer element used to study upslope soil erosion and downstream sedimentation. It has a half-life of approximately 30 days. So this half-life of 30 days, this means that if you were to start with, let's say if you were to start with two kilograms of cesium-137, that 30 days later, 30 days later, you're going to have one kilogram of cesium-137, that the other kilogram has decayed into other things. Assume, and if you waited another 30 days, you would have half a kilogram of cesium-137. Assume that the amount A in becquerels of cesium-137 in a soil sample is given by the exponential function A is equal to C times R to the T, where T is the number of days since the release of cesium-137 into the soil, and C and R are unknown constants. So this bears some explaining. What is this becquerel business? So normally, if I were to talk about the amount of some element, I'd, I'd probably be thinking in terms of mass, and I might talk in terms of kilograms. But some people might also be referring to the amount of this radioactive substance in terms of the amount of radioactivity it produces. And Becquerel's is the international unit of radioactivity, named after Henry Becquerel, who co-discovered radioactivity with Marie Curie. So, you could consider this the amount of the amount of cesium-137 that causes a becquerels of act of radioactivity. But either way, we can just think of it as a as a quantity. But it's really the quantity that causes a becquerels of activity. So just to be clear, the the uh, amount is given by the exponential function a is equal to. Let me just rewrite it. A is equal to c times r to the t power where T is the number of days since the release of the cesium-137 in the soil, and C and R are unknown constants. Fair enough. So let's just be clear, this is days, days since release. In addition, assume that we know that the initial amount of cesium-137 released in the soil is eight becquerels, is eight becquerels. Solve for the unknown constants C and R. So the initial in the soil, that's when T is equal to zero, when no days have passed. So we could say that the amount at time zero, well, that's going to be equal to c times r to the zero power, which is just going to be equal to c times one, which is equal to c. And they tell us what a of zero is. They say a of zero is eight, is eight becquerels. So this is going to be equal to eight. So our constant here, the c, is just going to be equal to eight. What is the value of the constant? We could just write eight right over there. Then they ask us, what is the value? So the value of the constant c is eight. What is the value of the constant r? Round to the nearest thousandth. So we're starting with eight. So a of zero is eight. How much are we going to have after 30 days? And the reason why I'm picking 30 days is that is the half-life of cesium-137. So a of 30, remember our t is in, let me just switch colors just for fun. Remember, t is in days. So a of 30, so after 30 days, I'm going to, this is, if I want to use this, 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 the formula right over here, if I wanted to use the description of this exponential function, we already know that c is eight. It's going to be eight times r to the 30th power, which is going to be equal to what? Well, if we started with eight, 30 days later, we're going to have half as much. We're going to have four becquerels. We're going to have four. And now we can use this to solve for r. So you have eight times r to the 30th power is equal to four, divide both sides by eight. You get r to the 30th power is equal to four over eight, which is the same thing as one half. And then we can take the 1 30th, we can raise both sides to the 1 30th power. r to the 30th, but then, the one, then, then you could think of it as the 30th root of that, or raising that to the 1 30th power, that's just going to give us r is equal to one half to the 1 30th power. And that is something that's very hard to compute in your head, so I suggest you use a calculator for that. And they, they, they hint, because we're going to round to the nearest, we're going to round to the nearest thousand. So let's get a calculator right out. And so we're talking about 1 half to the 1 over 30 power. 1 over 30 power. So we get. 0.9771599 keeps going. But they tell us to round to the nearest thousand, so it's 0.977.
0 0.977, 0 0.977, rounded to the nearest thousandth. And then they finally say, how many becquerels of cesium-137 remain in our sample 150 days, 150 days after its release in the soil? Use the rounded value of r and round this number to the nearest hundredth. So just to be clear, we now have our, we already know C and R. We know that the amount of cesium-137 in Becquerel's as a function of time and days is going to be equal to 8 times 0 0.977 to the t power, where t is the number of days that have passed. And they're essentially saying, well, how much do we have left after 150 days? So they want us to calculate is what is A of 150? Well, that's going to be 8 times 0 0.977 to the 150th power to the 150th power. And so clearly we need a calculator for this. So let's calculate that. So it's going to be 8 times. And they told us to use our rounded value of R, not the exact value of R. So it's going to be 8 times 0 0.977 to the 150th power. And that gets us point, and they want us to round to the nearest hundredth, 0 0.24. 0. 0. 0.24 is in 0 0.24 becquerels is kind of the radioactivity level of the cesium-137 that we have left over. Now one interesting thing is they, they asked us to use the rounded value of r, so we use the rounded value of r. But you could, because this right over here is a multiple of 30, you could actually, not too in, a, in not too difficult of a way, find out the exact value that's left over. And actually you don't even need a calculator for it. I encourage you to pause your video and try to think about that. Find the exact value. Well, instead of writing 0 0.977, let's write a of t as being equal to 8 times our r, this is an approximate value for r. If we wanted to be a little more exact, we can say that our r is 1 half to the 1 30th power. And we're going to raise that. We're going to raise that to the t power. Or we could say a of t is equal to 8 times 1 half to the t over 30 power. If we raise something to an exponent and then raise that to an exponent, we can take the product of those exponents. So that's 1 half to the t over 30 power. Let me actually do that in another color. Let me do that in yellow. So that's 8 times 1 half to the 1 half to the t over 30 power. 1 half to the t over 30 power. And actually, I don't need this. I don't need this parentheses right over here. This is another way to describe a of t. So what is a of 150? So a of 150 is going to be equal to 8 times 1 half, 1 half to the 150 over 30. Well, that's just 5. 1 half to the fifth power. Well, what's 1 half to the fifth power? That is 1 to the fifth over 2 to the fifth, or 1 over 32. So this right over here is 1 over 32, which is equal to 8 over 32. 8 over 32, which is equal to 1 over 4 which is equal to 1 over 4, or 0 0.25, or 0 0.25. So our, using our approximation for r, we got 0 0.24 when we rounded to the 150th power. So that's using our approximation a lot. We're multiplying, we're taking 150 of these and multiplying, by, by multiplying them together. But it, it's not too far off of what the real value is. And they asked us to use the rounded value, but if we'd used the, the, the precise value, the actual value, we would have gotten 0.25 becquerels would be left over.